All right, guys, today I will review some portfolios. A couple of them I found on LinkedIn and one on Reddit. This is going to be very insightful for you if you want to become a web developer because your portfolio is proof that you know what you're doing and then a company can actually invest in you because at the end of the day, you are an investment for a company and the better your portfolio is, the higher the chance of you getting that first job will be. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so let's look at the first uh, portfolio this one is from reddit and probably i'm gonna link this below this video so you can actually go and check it out yourself but let's uh, actually look at the website itself and uh, let's see what uh, has been done here actually i really like this animation i think this is pretty clever i like this setup here it it's very quirky but in a good way so i am a little bit impressed um, maybe because I used to be an ultra nerd, I used to have encyclopedias and stuff like that when I was a young child, I used to draw dinosaurs and whatever, so this is kind of reminding me of those books. Anyway, let's look at the actual projects, and this is where we start to have um, problems, right? So let's look at the website. Here what I would do is, instead of navigating from this website to that project specifically, I would open this in a new tab, you know? because then maybe I want to go back to your website, check out more stuff. And obviously I'm not gonna be able to do that if you literally redirect me to another website. So open an, a new tab whenever you have uh, a project that you wanna showcase, okay? So let's see, log it, a simple food tracking app. I need to search for something, chicken. Okay. Uh, what's very important for you guys, if you want to become web developers and especially front-end developers, is to understand that the applications that you're making are not made for other developers. So nobody really cares about the technology that you're using, I mean, to a certain extent, right? But what matters is the experience that you're creating for the user. Because remember, at the end of the day, Programming is made to solve problems with code and those problems are solved for humans for other people and these people Have been trained over the past, you know 10 20 years To use an application and the application should behave in a certain way. Okay, for example, if I search for pork I should have some sort of spinner. The first time when I actually search for chicken, probably you can remember this. If not, go back to the video. You'll see that there was no indication that something is happening behind the scenes, right? So always try to make sure that whenever you're fetching data and whatnot, you're letting the user know that something is happening, okay? Try and use Instagram, try and use Coinbase, try and use uh, CoinMarketCap, try and use any application and try to understand every single thing that happens whenever you interact with that application. That's gonna give you the most amount of insights when it comes to building your own projects, okay? It's not like there is a book or like a checklist uh, that you have to follow. These are like unspoken rules, okay? And you have to be aware of what's happening and then you need to figure out, okay, I'm doing this, the standard is this. What do I need to do to gap or to close the gap between where I am and where I have to be. This is pretty much all you have to do as a programmer and in life in general. You look at where you are right now, where you want to be, and then you figure out the steps in between and you just keep doing that. Try to give me more features up front. Try to give me more stuff up front to uh, interact with because I don't want to log in, I don't want to sign up, I don't want to confirm my email, I don't want to do anything, you know? Just give me as much stuff as possible. I would rate it maybe two out of 10. It's an API call, that's it, you know, there's, there's not much. Let's look at this one. So it's a pizza website made with Next.js TypeScript. Uh, the design looks good, okay? But it's over, overly engineered, I guess. Comes with an admin dashboard, which allows the administrator to view sales and other history, add, edit, remove products, and remove users. Admin credentials will be given upon request for demonstrative purposes. Cool, so it seems like there are a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes, but uh, I... All right, so there is an error there. Links, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. 
Okay. I don't know if uh, this guy gave up on this project, but try to make sure that your application actually works. This is a big lesson. One of my students actually applied to a couple of jobs with the project that we are building. And we had an error in the sign up, right? And we didn't know about that, but uh, she actually probably lost uh, the opportunity of having an interview because we messed up one feature, okay? And this is very important to understand. You will be judged based on your worst feature, okay? Not based on your best appearance, based on the worst thing that you are showing. This is just a website. Uh, I'm not gonna review websites, portfolio, let's see. I didn't see this beforehand, you know, I just found it and then I went for it, okay? And as you can see, uh, there are a lot of points where he can fail. And I think he does have the skills or he is on the right track to get the skills. I'm not sure if he's still applying, I'm not sure if he's still trying to get a job, um, but he does have the skills, you know? Anyway, let's go to the next things. This is another project that I found. I think he's from this guy. Funny enough, he started learning how to code when I moved from Romania to London. And this is when I got my first job. So we kind of have the same timeline, but uh, I actually became a developer and he didn't. Not to make fun of him, but this is a, a common story for a lot of people. They, they start something a long time ago they don't do anything about it. And then nine years later, you know, they end up in the same spot as when they first started, you know. But anyway, this is the project that I found and it's a job board application uh, or a job board website for junior developers. And it's a pretty basic CRUD application. It's not even CRUD. I mean, it's just storing a link, I suppose. Let's see. Is it working in real time? I'm curious. One year ago. So probably he added manually all the websites in this uh, application. And as you can see here, he had the opportunity to open this website in a new tab, right? Because right now I'm clicking on this and I'm navigating away. And what if I start clicking here and here and here, and then I forget how to go back to the original project? Well. It's not great for him. Um, so yeah, this is something to consider, to keep in mind, okay? Now let's look at another one. This is Scrabble, uh, the phonetic crossword game, all right? Play as guest, Christian, go. Uh, go. I think it's broken. Um, and the purpose of this uh, video is to show you how people kind of screw themselves and they don't even know it, okay? So come into this industry, right? Thinking that it's a get rich quick scheme and probably you don't say this, um, you don't verbalize this, but in the back of your mind, you are telling yourself like, oh, I'm just gonna spend a few months doing the bare minimum and I'm gonna become a developer. Now, most people will realize like, oh shit, this is not actually what I thought it is, right? And on top of that, you create this type of projects, which are, let's be honest, very simple, very lame. Uh, in fact, they look horrible. They don't have any sort of complexity whatsoever you'll come and you'll be absolutely annihilated. You'll be spit out by this industry real quick because the standard is here, but you guys are playing at this level, okay? In fact, when I got my first job, my project was even more complex and it looked better than what I'm seeing nowadays. I don't know why this happens, but I, I talked with a bunch of uh, friends that uh, uh, work at different software de uh, development companies uh, or in software development teams 
and they receive uh, resumes and stuff like that from juniors and they saw that there is a decline in the quality of work that juniors are producing on this. I don't know why this happens. Probably lack of attention or like mm, there's not enough time to actually dedicate towards this. But the problem is that you will potentially fail at this, right? This is a very high chance. You might not accept it and I understand that. But at some point after five years of like making Scrabble games and uh, websites like this, you'll be like, okay, you know what? This is not for me, right? You'll come across another opportunity, which might be, I don't know, data science or like cybersecurity or TikTok dropshipping or, or whatever it might be. And you'll try your hand at that because it seems easy and it seems doable and whatever your irrational mind is trying to make sense of and then is going to convince you in a rational way because that's how humans work and then you'll start doing it and then you'll realize that you'll get to the same point as you are right now with coding and then what you will do is you'll quit again okay and then after a couple of years another thing is going to show up in front of you another opportunity and you'll try that and then you'll fail again because What's happening is like, there is a point where you have to decide, am I gonna double down on this and I'm gonna make it work, not try to make it work, but actually making it work or I'm gonna quit. On top of that, your self-esteem is gonna take a huge beating. Um, when you fail and you fail and you fail and you fail, you fail, you fail, you can be as tough as David Goggins, but at some point you'll say, you know what, this is not for me. So this is what's gonna happen if you don't do it right. That's why, like whenever you sit down to do your work, like make sure that you actually do your work. So how do you overcome all these problems? How do you get better at this? You need a mentor, okay? It doesn't have to be me. I have done a lot of things and I have created different systems and different roadmaps and ways for you to learn this stuff. But it doesn't have to be me you can find someone that is where you want to be and invest money, time and energy into that person and follow what that person says to a T. Just do that, okay? Do not try to figure it out by yourself because you just waste a lot of time, especially if you're in your late 20s, early 30s, 40s, 50s. You don't have time. Anyway, I hope you'll have a great day. Thank you for bearing with me till now. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.